In this video, we're going to talk about Taoist inner alchemy, but first we're going to go through some of the neurology of the meditative phosphines. I promised we would go more in depth on this topic, but it's also important because this is how we're going to approach the Taoist inner alchemy. So these are a progression of phosphines that are seen in deep stages of meditation. Now keep in mind, these are different than the phosphines you see when you rub your eyes, or even in hypnagogic imagery before you fall asleep. There can be some variation in the form and color of these phosphines. They are specific neurological mechanisms. These are behind the mystic and meditative traditions found all over the world. The first stage are these green rings that appear. There's usually around three to five of them. These are found to be spindle bursts. It's a synchronous firing of cells that puts the body to sleep in the second stage of non-REM. It progresses through different stages of sleep and finally ends with a temporal lobe seizure. These spindle bursts last for only a couple seconds and they occur in short intervals. And it's coming from a part of the thalamus. It's because of these reticular nuclei. They're located by the sensory relay nuclei. They're basically really important for sensory processing, but during sleep, they fire in synchronous activity called the spindle bursts and put your body to sleep. During this time, under normal sleep conditions, the sensory gating is turned off. But because during meditation or hypnotic states, the visual system is still activated while the rest of the body is sleeping, that pathway is not closed off. This means that when the spindle bursts are activating, there is an interaction with the LGN here. The end result are the green phosphines here. And the same goes on in the deeper stages of sleep. Because the visual system is still activated, there's a lot of interaction between these different firings of neurons that light up the visual system. The author put together an overview of light vision metaphors used in Asian texts. So you have like the wheels and the eye of the peacock feather, and it progresses further into the lightning and the ocean of light. Here are some of the texts from the Rig Veda Three wheels form a radiant chariot. These radiant wheels are verdant green. We have Agni's flame arrows. And later on, we see Soma and finally Indra's lightning. In the Hindu meditative tradition, it's experiencing different aspects of these various divinities. And of course, it's associated with the Kundalini and enlightenment. In the Upanishads, we have an experience of Brahman. Fireflies are among the preliminary forms which produce the manifestation of Brahman. So these were exalted and ecstatic experiences. In the various traditions and texts, they use different kinds of metaphors to describe it. In some of the Buddhist schools of meditation, they actually take a completely different perspective. They say that the lights are a lie, or that they're an illusion, and to not follow the lights. The goal of that school of thought is simply to meditate in the kind of profound emptiness, which maybe came as a result of noticing different levels of potential brain damage when the meditative phosphines got to the point that it was a temporal lobe seizure. So there's lots of different perspectives and approaches that various different schools of thought and cultures took in their approach to this. In Taoist Inner Alchemy, we get yet another perspective that is quite interesting. But I wanted to share some of the comparisons of these different cultures and the neuroscience when we approach Taoist alchemy. In simplest terms, Taoist inner alchemy was all about mixing these internal energies or pneumas with these celestial pneumas and creating elixirs that can be sent to vitalize different parts of the body for longevity, for healing and wisdom, and to become one with the Tao. So this is part two on Taoist inner alchemy, and we're just gonna go straight into it now. The Taoist mystics would go on these meditative journeys across this mythic landscape. These kind of mental landscapes were metaphorically or spiritually linked to specific parts of the body. So you would have fields and valleys and swamps and palaces, and each one was linked to a different organ or system or kind of um, process of the body. What they did was kind of direct or administrate these different energies or pneumas into various parts of that mythic landscape. They did this in order to kind of line things up so that they could call forth these different 
inner celestial deities. We're going to look at a specific school of Taoism called the Shenqing, or the Upper Clarity, or the Highest Clarity. This was created by a Taoist mystic around 370 AD who had a series of meditative visions that he received from Taoist deities. We'll get into some actual scripture in a little bit, but I want to talk about one of these specific practices called pacing the celestial net. The practice involved creating a mental image of a constellation such as the Big Dipper, and that they would kind of use that to draw down that celestial energy. By drawing out these different primal energies, they would be able to kind of connect with the divinities, and those divinities would bestow blessings on different parts of their body. These different divinities had specific forms. They were luminaries. They were light bodies. So these Taoist luminary divinities were phosphenes, specifically phosphenes that were generated in different events of the brain. They would start with a highly imaginative practice and generating all this hypnagogic imagery, and then eventually that would propel them into these phosphine visions, this light journey. This is where it starts to differ from other schools of meditation and where the inner alchemy really starts to begin. What they were trying to do was take these celestial light bodies, these phosphines, and mix them with their own. And then they would direct or will that light to different parts of their body. The way that we might be able to kind of wrap our heads around this with modern technology as a metaphor would be in these like meditative states, they're kind of going into the command prompt of their computer, of their brain, and giving it direct orders as if they were kind of encoding or willing information into these luminous forms and then sending those to different parts of the body for healing, longevity, and kind of like spiritual connection to nature. So now I'll read some Taoist scripture on these meditative light journeys, specifically the purple texts by Yang Shi. I'm going to be skipping around to different passages, but keep in mind that the language is meant to be exalted, it's poetic and cryptic. You should regularly observe the precise moment of the first emergence of the sun at sunrise, facing the emerging sun in the east, and knock your teeth together nine times. This complete, you should in your mind secretly invoke the spirits, calling the names of the cloud souls of the sun and the by names of the five thearchs of the sun, and saying, Cloud souls of the sun, orbed phosphors, envelop of reflectivity, green glare, red lads of the revolving auras, dark blaze, whirlwind, simulacra. These five secret names have a very luminary and elemental association to them. Here in the footnote, it says, Though translation of these secret names accomplishes little more than to compound their original mystery, it does help us to understand precisely which aspects of the sun and of the after image it leaves on the human retina are emphasized in this visualization. From that, we can start to see how they viewed the celestial bodies, the planets, the stars, and the sun, and the moon, as having this light that they could kind of capture and control and use it to go into different stages of the meditative journey. And so now they're going to talk about what you do with that light. Having invoked the spirits in your mind, calling these 16 words, then close your eyes and seal your fists. Visualize the flowing auroras in five colors from within the sun, all approaching to receive your body down to your feet. Then envision these five pneumas rising to the top of your head. With this, the five colored flowing auroras of sunlight will enter into your mouth. Within the sunlight auroras, there will also be a purple pneuma, as large as the pupil of your eye, but wrapped in several tens of layers and flashing brilliantly within the five colored rays of the sun. This is called the flying root of the solar efflorescence, the jade placenta, mother of water. Together with the five pneumas, it will enter into your mouth. Here's another incantation. Cinnabar pneumas of the vermilion furnace, nurturing germs of the orbed heavens, the brittle accepts the pliant, blazing liquids and shadowy blossoms. The primal phosphors of the solar chronogram are called the grandly luminous. Their ninefold yang coordinates transformation as the two smoky vapors issue forth. And it continues this imagery. You have the cloud souls and the white souls and the five breaths and different auroras and how it's reflecting kind of various parts of this mythic landscape. Here's another incantation, Cinnabar writ of grand tenuity, entitled Opening Luminescence. Bring to me the cloud souls of the sun on high, to come and transform shape. Just at dawn, carefully garbed, they issue from the round courts. Mother of water is a flying efflorescence, the golden essence, a solar root. 
Their purple reflections flow within its beams, which are called the five Newmans. Some more of the arcane symbolism. In the dark barrens, breaths of upper clarity, colors of the three elementals rush into the mottled murk, which is the brain. Toward the abyss, numinous portals open, seven gates swung wide by feathered lads, allowing unobstructed descent to a vision of cinnabar. To that distant yet clear, the dark cycles are made manifest. You achieve realization, awakening to the mystic junctures, perch on the brink, then fly into the grand void, the solar estrid in the wilds of the grand cavern, shrouded and fleeting beams from a blossoming fungus, in an abandoned realm, a canopied conveyance of the barrens. Cut off from your dwelling, you communicate with the hidden, for an exalted meeting with the gate towers of the mystic timekeepers. Bareheaded, you attend morning audience with the jade monarchs. Your spirits blossom to the tones of the ruddy spirit, while the rhythms of the void sound forth from rose gem chimes. As your nine harnessed cloud coach crosses the sky, you roam among peaks wrapped in purple auroras, where cyan rooms open on the cinnabar mound. Five chambers are arrayed within a green court. The golden port flashes ruggedly in the distance. Shaded and vague are the palaces of upper clarity. Savor the flowers of sun and moon. Glimpse the contours of the formless realm. Mystically bring about perception of your three spirit registers as you glide silently across Kalpas and Fathoms. Where are you seated while still on the road? The five difficulties will grow in your breast. Why not take control of the ready infant and depend on your personal sire of the muddy pellet? Then you will not die, nor will you be born. You will not begin, nor will you end. I could go on and on with different scriptures. I don't know how much you guys are interested in actual Taoist scriptures. I think it's pretty fascinating. Now, obviously, there's a lot of context I'm skipping over, but um, Taoism itself is very complex and very intricate, and the esoteric side of Taoism, the alchemical side of Taoism, is even more so. How they believed the stars and phosphines and different ways that they were connected and how you could direct that energy to different parts of your body it's very fascinating. It certainly gives us a different perspective or different newfound meaning to the word insight and enlightenment. In the early mystic traditions, it was a very literal thing. It wasn't like a sense of enlightenment. It was like an actual physical light. And obviously associated with their cosmology and their culture and um, different divinities and divine aspects. Yeah, I think that's enough for this video. Just see what you guys think of this um, and maybe what you're interested in seeing next. If you want me to get away from some of the esoteric stuff for a bit or not, or go more into Taoism or alchemy or the different meditative visions referenced in various cultures and just keep comparing them. Let me know. Um, if not, I'll just do random topics. I don't have any problem. But uh, thanks for watching.